and I'll be keeping an eye too on the chat. So if anybody has any questions at any time, just let me know and uh, I'll take those at any time during the, during the session. I think, let me just take a look here. I think pretty much everyone here knows me already. Okay, yeah. Okay, so once again, um, I'd like to officially welcome everyone to our first virtual conference. Um, we have held a number of virtual events this year, as Pablo mentioned, and it is typical actually for the ILN to hold webinars. Uh, so we've done that in past years, but this is the first time in the ILN's history that we're holding a fully virtual conference and the first year that we won't be meeting in person for our 32 year history. So for those of you that may not know me, I think everyone on our list does, but uh, we are recording this. So for, for those of you in the future who may watch this who don't know me, I'm Lindsay Griffiths and I am the ILN's executive director. Uh, many of you know me as the one you get all the emails from. That's how everyone uh, who I meet for the, for the first time always says uh, and when I introduce myself. Uh, so we're so thrilled that so many of you could join us for this event this year. Uh, before we get underway with some ILN business, I'd like to say a few words about this conference and our ILN conferences in general. Um, and for some housekeeping, as I mentioned, this particular session is a webinar, so you will only be able to see and hear me. And if you have any questions along the way, please don't, do put those in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, for the rest of the events today, those will be in a meeting format, which will enable you to see and hear everybody else that's in attendance. So that's going to be more interactive and more networking focused. So for those of you who've had the opportunity to attend ILN in-person conferences in the past, you know that those are the corner piece of our network. Relationships are the lifeblood of the ILN. And being able to get together in person gives us the ability to form those relationships and to strengthen them. So it may seem that being unable to get together in a pandemic year would have a terrible impact on an organization that relies so heavily on seeing each other live. But it is, in fact, those very relationships that allow us to thrive. It's the work of all of you that has enabled us to grow and strengthen the ILN in this challenging year through Zoom calls, coffee chats, one-on-one -on -one meetings, webinar sessions, ILN Light with our young lawyers, recruitment roundtables, and now our virtual conference, we've seen more engagement than ever in the network. While it is our goal to get back to in-person conferences as soon as it's healthy and safe enough for our members to do so, we are incredibly grateful to our membership for the flexibility and adaptability they've shown in 2020, which will make us a stronger and more valuable organization for years to come. So today you've already heard from the ILN's chair, Pavla Kopuchkova Prokrilova, who took over the helm in one of our most challenging years. Many of you know Pavla already, and we hope that for those of you who haven't yet had the pleasure that you'll soon get to meet her in person. And as she mentioned, you will see her throughout the week at a number of different sessions. And Pavla mentioned our board of directors, and I would like to give a special thanks to everyone on our board as well, past and present. We all know that this year has been a challenging one. And while our board has always done a lot of work for the ILN, and we've, we've asked them to really step up this year from emergency sessions to discuss the conference to multiple virtual board meetings and additional member outreach, and they've all done it without complaint. So we thank those directors who have stepped down this year, especially our past chair, Simon Eakins, Hernan Cordero, Bruce Voigter, Adnad Krishnan, Ziad Saloum, and Henning von Lillian Schuld. Continuing thanks goes to our current board and our newly formed executive committee who've really stepped up to add their counsel and time this year. Our executive committee, as Pablo mentioned, includes her, Attilio Ferrari, Andreas Kaiser, and Melissa Cano with our board members, including Amy Fracassini, Carl Grassi, Diego Gutierrez, Martinez Parente, Mitchell Karsh, Marie McDonald, Laurent Marvi, Juan Pablo Schwenke, Tom Karsten Troberg, and Rick Walsh. 
please know that while I am always here for you as the ILM's executive director, each of our board members is also a great resource for you and their contact information is available right on the ILM's website. Uh, in 2020, the ILN brought on the Chicago office of longtime member firm McDonald Hopkins as our representative member for Chicago. As McDonald Hopkins celebrates its 90th anniversary in 2020, it continues its commitment to providing insight for the challenges at hand and foresight for the next generation of business. McDonald Hopkins has thrived as a law firm because of its long lasting relationships with businesses and individuals who share its entrepreneurial spirit. The firm works best with people who understand that it takes passion and hard work to build a successful business from the ground up. McDonald Hopkins attorneys and professionals continue to help clients navigate some of the most challenging and timely issues affecting businesses. As the times change and world evolves, the firm continues to innovate, grow, and embrace new ways of doing business. And members of the firm will be present throughout the week for the conference, so we invite you to make them feel welcome and connect with them as you attend the various sessions. And we have been thrilled to welcome Kalis, Kenny, and Telex in Melbourne, Australia to the ILM this year as well. They're a progressive, commercially oriented firm specializing in property, corporate and commercial, and dispute resolution. Their lawyers offer outstanding commercial and legal experience in several key industries, providing clear commercial advice and strategies. They share their client's success by becoming a true strategic partner in their pursuits and always seek to deliver more value by offering business outcomes in addition to legal advice. Their personal and proactive approach combined with a straightforward nature makes them a different kind of law firm. For over 25 years, they've been providing expert legal and proactive strategic advice for some of Melbourne's most successful property developers, entrepreneurs, and business people. They've really hit the ground running in the ILN and certainly will be attending many of the sessions this week as well. So please make sure to introduce yourselves to them and make them feel welcome. And in addition, we do have some guest firms joining us during the conference sessions this week too. So they may have questions for you as ILN members and we welcome you to answer those questions as candidly as you can. And if you don't know the answers to those, you can refer those lawyers to either myself or a board member as well and please help us to continue growing the ILN. So we know that 2020 has been a challenging year for everyone. And one of the topics we'll be addressing throughout the conference is the various ways in which firms have dealt with those challenges and what we see are the best practices for the near and long-term future. However, I would also like to offer some highlights for this year that reflect the strength of network members and the ways in which we've met these challenges head on and continue to face them. First, I will say, having spoken over the last couple of months to almost every one of our members by either phone or Zoom, the general consensus of our firms is that we've come through 2020 a little bit better than anticipated when the news of COVID first broke. There seems to be a few key reasons for this. First, the global, the global financial crisis of 2008 and 2009 taught us all a number of valuable lessons that we brought forward and implemented quickly in reaction to what we were seeing in late 2019, early 2020. Because mid-sized law firms are more agile by nature, we're able to move more quickly and efficiently to answer the needs of the market, and that has served everyone very, very well. It's also extremely helpful to have a brain trust of similar law firms around the world to draw on to see what other firms are doing, what their best practices are, and get a sense of what may be in front of or behind you in your marketplace. So our goal in 2020 was a simple one. With everything we did, we asked the question, what will add the most value to our membership? And so our highlights emphasize three key things, governance, referrals, and resources. In terms of governance, uh, one thing Pablo didn't mention but that we did was we slimmed the board down to 15 members. It's actually 14 members right now, but the board agreed we were going to be slimmed down to 15 members. And it makes us far more agile and able to make decisions quickly and efficiently for the benefit of member firms. So as I mentioned before, our board has been extremely dedicated this year in working towards driving member value. And one of the things that we did to ensure that, as she mentioned as well, is to form this executive committee. The goals of that committee are to provide organizational direction for the board, 
to provide organizational oversight and to manage high level network issues of a serious nature, as well as take the lead on communication and board development. So they essentially serve as an additional layer of communication and feedback for the membership. So if you have questions or concerns, you can consider them to be a resource for you as well. We have been absolutely thrilled that the level of referrals among network members has remained the same. Over the first period, reporting period of 2020, we did not see a drop at all. The numbers were identical to the reporting period, the same reporting period for 2019. And we believe that this is due to the strong relationships among member firms. So although it's generally believed that within the legal industry, in most jurisdictions, there's been a drop of about 30% in business, we have not seen a similar decline in ILN referrals. So obviously we'll continue to monitor this and work towards achieving additional opportunities for member firms. Obviously referrals are essential to the ILN and to your firms and the relationships that you will build and strengthen here this week are a key piece to driving these. So then we come to resources, which is where the most highlights for 2020 reside. And, and obviously when I talk about resources, the goal for us in anything that we do in developing those resources is to help build those relationships that will drive the referrals. That's really that resources piece. So again, this is where we asked over and over again, what will add the most value? So like many of you, we added a COVID hub on our website to centralize all of the COVID related co uh, content that was coming in from member firms so that it would be easily found and highlighted in one central location. We then developed an email, which Pablo mentioned earlier too, which was first delivered on a weekly basis and then a little more spread out as uh, the pandemic wore on. We might ramp that up again uh, now that some countries are going back into lockdown. And that was a combination of events, content, and surveys. Surveys that included things like, um, what does the, um, how is your firm operating? Uh, how are your courts operating? So various um, information that might be valuable to people in terms of, you know, if a firm wants to be able to make a referral to another jurisdiction, it might be helpful to know if their courts are even operating at the moment. So that type of information can be extremely valuable. So what we found helpful to know too is that those emails were being opened on a rate of 56%, which is against an industry standard of 15% and our own standard of 36%. So that showed us that those emails were actually very valuable to members. We offered nine webinars over a period of 10 months, which is a big increase for us. And that is not, uh, not including the webinars that were being offered by other industry members that were outside of the ILN that we made available to ILN members as well. We also launched a podcast with member firm lawyers that delved into some of the key best practices and practical advice for navigating the pandemic and practicing law in today's landscape. The podcast currently has 20 episodes and over 26,000 listens. We've gotten our young lawyers together with ILN Light Sessions, which we'll be continuing on a monthly basis. And we also established a Latin American working group, which, and they've been meeting regularly over Zoom to identify opportunities for growth in the region. And our member firm content has seen almost 185,000 reads through our content partners, JD Supra, with members delivering succinct, valuable guidance on subjects including force majeure, temporary layoffs, paid leave, and unprecedented aid which are all topics that were requested by both our member firms and their clients. And then there's this conference itself. We have 50 sessions over five days with more than 160 unique participants. We have five outside speakers and countless, opportunity to, uh, countless opportunities to network. And we still have two months to go in 2020. So. Um, we're really excited about what this year has held, despite the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic. So although it's been a truly challenging year, there have been a lot of highlights, and there's a lot for our membership to be proud of. You've all worked exceptionally hard this year, and if we consider only that an entire profession had to move to remote working in about two weeks and actually did it, 
that in and of itself is an incredible accomplishment. So while I know that many of us are still exhausted and overwhelmed, this is also a moment to take a look back and be truly proud of what we've accomplished under really challenging circumstances. So as Paula said too, though, we're not just resting on our laurels. We have some equally big plans for 2021 and we have already begun to work on them. The, as she mentioned, the ILN has always had this sort of semi-formal review and quality assurance process. We conduct a biannual referral survey and that referral survey is not just about counting the number of referrals we have, it's also about asking members for their responses to some quality assurance questions and responsiveness questions. We also deal with these questions on an ongoing process so that we can address them as they arise. We have the ability as part of that process to form a quality control committee from members of the board and to review any member firm should there be a need to delve into any, any issues that may come up. So that process has always been in place and it's been something that we have instituted as we've needed to. But as we started to ask ourselves, how can we add more value to our, our members? we felt that instituting a more structured process became an essential need for the network. And so the administration is going to be working with the executive committee, and we have actually started this already, to design this more formal process. And the goal is to develop this 360 degree view by which we'll get a full sense of our member firms, their involvement with the ILN, their true capabilities, and how they function in their home markets. And because it's a 360 degree view, this is also an opportunity for the member firms to review us. We want to know how we can better serve you as the member firm, the best ways for you to engage in the ILN and what more we can be doing for you. Because of the in-depth nature of these reviews, which will be conducted by myself and members of our board, it's anticipated that we'll be doing about five to six of these a year. So because of COVID, we'll, we'll be using the early part of 2021 to develop the process and do the preliminary research on the firms that we'll be looking at for next year. And then we anticipate doing the in-person visits to the first set of firms, hopefully in the later part of 2021, given the, um, the health and safety concerns of, uh, of the visits, depending on how things are going at the end of next year. Uh, as Pablo mentioned, also recruitment is and continues to be a major priority for us. So because it continues to be a major priority, you may wonder why I keep it on the list and keep mentioning it. And there are two reasons for that. One is that we do have some new faces joining us throughout this week. And so I always like to emphasize it as being important because the best recruitment tool we have is our existing members. When there is an open jurisdiction and a, new, a member firm lawyer reaches out to someone that they know at a potential firm and makes an introduction for us, that works infinitely better than when I make a cold call to a potential firm. So as we continue to make our recruitment priorities known through our flash briefings, our recruitment roundtables, or when you notice that there's an open jurisdiction, please take a look at who you might be working with there. When you do a deal or you have a matter and you respect your opposing or your co-counsel and you think that there might be a good fit or you know that your client does business in that jurisdiction, please reach out and let us know. The more that we build the ILN, the greater the referral basket becomes for everyone. And secondly, we're going to be putting together what will effectively be a recruitment task force with current board members and other members, senior members of the ILN. The idea is to identify the true priorities for the ILN and then actively work to recruit in those jurisdictions. We have obviously a number of cities that we're looking to bring in member firms, but as a network with a slim and efficient administration, we need to be targeted and strategic about our recruitment efforts and goals. The more strategic we are, the more we make use of our membership, the more successful we will be. Our members are our most important ambassadors, so we plan to continue to use them in a way that will be much more deliberate. And next, we'll be working to extend our online networking. I fully understand and recognize Zoom fatigue because 
I have it myself. Um, and so this is not something that I say lightly by any means when I say we're going to extend our networking. But there are a couple of pieces to this. So I fully believe that when you're in the midst of challenging times that it's necessary to look for lessons and silver linings. And that's not because I'm necessarily a positive person. My, my mom will tell you that I'm not. <laughs> um, but because regardless of what's going on, we have to figure out how to cope with these difficulties anyway. So we might as well make the most out of them. So for us, as I mentioned earlier, it is absolutely our goal to get back to in-person conferences as soon as it's healthy and safe enough for our members to do so. But it has actually been beneficial to involve more of our member firms in a broader and more regular way during the pandemic than ever before. So that's something we'd like to continue doing. But we'd like to do it in a more targeted way so that everyone is able to concentrate on the subjects and areas that are of most interest to them. So we'll be working on better segmenting our member list, our email list, so that we can better integrate a wider number of members without inundating everyone with unnecessary emails. So that's also going to reduce the burden on our ambassadors and increase the value overall to our member firms. So there are several other things we'll also be undertaking in 2021 as well, including, as Pavel mentioned, hopefully the long overdue overhaul of our website. So we'll be involving and engaging each of you in our uh, various endeavors in various ways as well. Um, before we wrap up, let me just check and see if there's any questions. Nope, that's great. Okay. Um, I do want to go through the schedule for the remaining days and invite you to register for those events if you haven't already. We have some excellent sessions coming up. And so as a reminder, the website is iln-2020-virtual-conference.contact constantcontactsites.com for more information. And you probably have a lot of emails from me that have that website in there also. Um, and that has more information and to register. You can also listen to our lovely uh, conference playlist in there, which I know some of our members have been listening to, and you can contribute to that playlist yourselves. And we would love to hear some of the music that you're listening to also. So uh, today we have our, um, our regional, or yes, our regional um, get togethers, our um, intro sessions for the rest of the day. We already had our Asia Pacific session this morning, this morning for me, this evening for them. Um, tomorrow, Tuesday, we kick off the day with two time slots for our business development sessions with Michael Roke. Michael is the Chief Commercial Officer for AllianceBoard.com, where he's responsible for marketing, new business development, and client retention. He's also a Global Boardroom Advisor on Partnerships, Alliances, and Ecosystems. In the professional services sector, more than a dozen market-leading firms and global networks are among his clients. So tomorrow, the, um, we're going to be discussing how existing clients and new client development link together, how to think about new revenues and explain what business development means in a post-COVID world. Both of those sessions are going to be interactive and include breakouts. So definitely take a look at those and register for those. We also have our separate roundtable discussions on three separate topics, which are handling the pandemic, budgeting for 2021, and best practices for technology use in your firms. So those are tomorrow as well. Uh, on Wednesday, we have our fullest day with a ton of breakout sessions. We have eight of our specialty groups meeting first thing and again later in the day with another two meeting mid-morning. Um, we ask that you please come prepared to engage and fully discuss the topics being covered. And our women's group is also meeting twice that day following each of the two big breakout sessions. And I want to give a special thanks to our specialty group chairs who have been incredible in working with me on putting together what is going to be an amazing day of sessions and preparation for, um, for those breakouts. So that's going to be a, a really amazing day. Thursday is our big speaker day. We have Dr. Larry Richard of The Lawyer Brain. And Dr. Larry, I have to say, is one of my all-time favorite speakers. 
His session is on how to thrive in a time of stress and uncertainty, evidence-based tips for lawyer well-being. The pandemic has caused stress and anxiety all over the globe. It's disrupted some of our fundamental psychological needs. Dr. Larry Richard, who's the leading expert on the psychology of lawyers, will explain why lawyers are at even greater risk for this kind of stress. Fortunately, advances in the behavioral sciences have led to a number of powerful but simple steps that you can apply to restore your sense of equilibrium and psychological well-being. Dr. Richard will share at least a half a dozen of the most effective evidence-based tips and techniques. Given what we've all been through in 2020, I can safely say that this is a can't-miss session. So we also have our friends at Optimal Networks, Hainan Landa and Frank Schapani, who will be doing a session on data privacy and cybersecurity. Many of our firms already cover these two very important topics, and we even have our cybersecurity group meeting on Wednesday for their breakout session, but we do have firms that don't cover this. And so Hainan and Frank are going to be doing their own session on this very important topic. It was a topic that was requested by many of our member firms in the pre-conference survey. So on Thursday, that is another session we will be doing. So that's going to be covered as well. And then on Thursday is our regional breakout session day. So we're going to be discussing a variety topic of topics, which are both general to the network and specific to your particular jurisdictions. And I know, you know, this is a hot week in the U.S. We've got our presidential election. So, and that doesn't just affect the U.S., I know. Uh, it's going to affect a lot of cross-border um, jurisdictions as well. So that may pop up in some of those, in some of those regional discussions. So I think, you know, whether or not we know what the results of the election is by Thursday, uh, you definitely don't want to miss those regional breakouts and some of those interesting discussions. And then Friday, again, another day of important discussions. We're bringing in Jeff Lesher to co-moderate the island's first diversity town hall with me. This conversation among our wonderful colleagues is part of an effort to provide a safe forum in which everyone, uh, doesn't matter if you feel that you're diverse or not, this forum is for everybody. Um, we're encouraging you to share how they may have personally experienced or witnessed others being supported in were denied access to resources and opportunity. With a deeper understanding of the circumstances surrounding and impacts of those experiences, we can more openly and productively explore what may be creating and preventing this access in the ILN and your firms. So we ask that you come prepared to share what you're doing already to create and support diversity, inclusion, and equity. And we also invite you to bring a challenge that the Assembled Brain Trust may help you to move forward. So Jeff is a really great speaker and we're very lucky to have him coming to co-moderate that session with me. And so I encourage you to register for that. As I mentioned before, we have the director's fireside chat where members of our board of directors will be available to speak with all of you to answer questions and talk about some of what we've been doing this year and our plans for next year. And then finally, we have our regional galas. And I know I've heard some questions about these from some people. The goal of these is to celebrate a really long and exciting week. We are designing these to be networking opportunities. I'll be rotating everyone in small groups to connect and chat. But for fun, I do encourage you to dress up in your gala finest. I am going to put a dress on. I know many of us are being locked down again and working from home, but if you want to put something fancy on, grab a cocktail and network as if you were actually attending an ILN gala event, I encourage you to do that. It will be fun. We will be networking. We will get to see each other. And many of these events, you will get to see each other. But, uh, but I do encourage you to do that. So throughout the week, please know that I'm here as a resource should you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing you throughout the sessions. And thank you so much. And CCAT, yes, just above the waist. <laughs> if you, if you want to just wear, you know, your suit jacket and your, your shirt waist. I mean, women, I think will probably have, I mean, if women are wearing like a top above the waist, that's fine. But if you have a dress, you probably need to wear the whole thing, not just cut it in half. Um, <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> um, and, uh, I'm really looking forward to a wonderful week with everybody. Um, 
and uh, and getting to see see all of you in the next Zoom session, which I believe is our European um, welcome reception, which will take place shortly. Um, but if anybody has any questions in the meantime, I'm available. And um, for everyone else, I'm happy to let you go on to your next thing. Um, our Asia Pacific group is quite late there. So thank you so much for joining us. And we'll look forward to seeing you later on. Thanks, everyone.